chilling wail that has terrified generations of Israelis today broke their hearts. The air raid sirens that have sent them running in the past from the threat posed by Arab air forces or Arab missiles today heralded a terrible homegrown disaster. These people were praying, mourning, and marking the murder of their prime minister, Yitzhak Rabin, shot at point blank range, killed by another Israeli. Harry Barbonell is president of a group called Likud USA. In a sense, it is the kind of American auxiliary of the, uh, of the rightist uh, Likud party. Uh, are you feeling uncomfortable these days, uh, Howard, with uh, so many people pointing to uh, uh, the rhetoric of the right as kind of inflaming this, uh, this young man to commit this dreadful deed? Well, I think that there has to be a distinction made between the mainstream conservative opposition and the uh, far-right uh, extremist lunatics. Uh, you have to understand uh, the Likud party in Israel was the uh, government of Israel for uh, much of the last 15 years and uh, uh, certainly has been a party of peace. Uh, Camp David is the Likud's uh, achievement along with the Madrid conference. And uh, while there may be a, a, a wide gap of disagreement as to what constitutes a, a good peace and a solid peace, uh, there is no such thing as a pro-war there's, movement. There's language. I mean, some t we hear it maybe from Patrick Buchanan or, or someone kind of out there. Uh, you don't hear it from Robert Dole on the right in the United States. <coughs> it, it is different. You will admit that the, the temperament is different. I mean, I've never heard anyone call the President of the United States, for example, a Nazi or a traitor or anything similar to that. And anyone who does is kind of chastised and driven out of mainstream politics. Well, I, I remember as a much younger Likudnik back in the 80s uh, hearing uh, our Prime Minister Menachem Begin called a murderer and a Nazi and a traitor uh, in the streets of Tel Aviv by crowds of tens of thousands as well. This does not excuse it, nor does it make it right. And in fact, I will tell you that the greatest tragedy, uh, uh, I would say that a great tragedy that has emerged from this horrible, horrible uh, murder of the Prime Minister uh, is that uh, uh, it has highlighted the uh, less than uh, gentlemanly tone and tenor of uh, what passes for political debate in the Jewish community both in Israel and in the United States. What's the, your view of, uh, of Shimon Peres? Will you respect him? Will you follow his lead in the peace process? Well, uh, Mr. Netanyahu said forthrightly that the uh, opposition is not going to challenge the formation of this government. Uh, we in Likud USA believe very strongly that it is a, an appropriate time for reconciliation and for Jews to come together. You know, many people feel that the Jewish community in the United States is far more right-wing than most people on the right in Israel and in some ways uh, aggravates the Anyway, I'm going to give you plenty of time to respond. Plus, we have a war hero uh, standing by from Israel, so stay tuned for it. Rabin's 17-year-old granddaughter, Noah Ben Artsy, you want to reflect on what you said? I see your tears in your eyes, Ambassador. What can I say? The only thing that I can say, and I'll re remind you of one thing which is said, we hurt too much uh, you hurt to too think much. of revenge. And we do not think of revenge. I don't want to give short shrift to the Likud USA. When I asked the ambassador if he would sign the condolence book at the uh, Israeli uh, embassy, you wanted very much to say something. I wasn't sure. I wanted to say that uh, uh, the Likud has not been invited to any memorial service, and the Likud has not been invited to sign the book. Uh, we would be delighted to do both. Uh, and I would like to say that uh, in the uh, last few years uh, in the changeover in the consulate. Uh, uh, the invitations have not been uh, coming every day and uh, we certainly hope in the spirit of reconciliation and rapprochement coming out of this horrible tragedy that the national camp and uh, the American Jews in it uh, in New York which represents a sizable uh, segment of the population will again be uh, welcome at the consulate. Many people came to the consulate, none were invited. We simply advised people through the media that there is a book open. I was referring open. to your invitation to Mr. Al Kidwa here in specific. Mr. Al Kidwa came. Mr. Al Kidwa came on his own. This is a picture As many of the ambassador <laughs> for the PLO between the Israeli right and the, uh, and the Israeli government. People came spontaneously, and people came because they wanted to come, and nobody waited for an invitation. And the door of the Israeli consulate is open, and Saturday well, night as we came in. People just came because they wanted to come. Howard, don't you, I don't know, isn't there a way to turn this into something positive by maybe some kind of mutual agreement to mute the tone a bit? 
Well, I certainly would hope that everywhere in the uh, Jewish world that people will speak to each other with a bit more respect, perhaps much more like the British Parliament, where they uh, address each other as the right honorable gentleman or lady, instead of the usual epithets that have been hurled from both sides of, uh, of the political spectrum here uh, in, the, uh, in our uh, neck of the woods. Uh, I would say that uh, uh, truly uh, part of the reconciliation process has got to be a recognition that if you're going to make sea changes in the entire future of Zionism and sea changes in the entire future of the State of Israel, uh, then you need an overwhelming mandate from uh, the Jewish people and from their elected officials uh, to conduct this. And the 6159 vote uh, in Parliament for Oslo II on the strength of five Arab parliamentarians only exacerbated and heightened the uh, uh, sense of uh, tension and unease. Uh, 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 in the Jewish world that uh, this was being shoved down a vast uh, percentage of the people's throats uh, without their consent and without their agreement. Okay. Uh, Ambassador, Ambassador Alvital, we're gonna, I'm going to hold you for three more minutes. I'll take the commercial break and I'll allow you then to respond to Mr. Barbanel of Likud USA. Thanks very much, uh, Richard. Ambassador Alvital, uh, before I lose you, uh, I'll allow you to make your closing statement on anything you care to. Two very quick remarks, because I think, to the right honorable representative of the Likud, because I think this so much have to do with the nature of the debate, which is currently underway in Israel and will continue to be, and it has to do with the substance. We're speaking about the essence of Zionism, as I understand it, and nobody's changing the essence of Zionism, quite on the contrary. Zionism is not a matter of inches of borders of territory. Zionism is the national movement of liberation of the Jewish people that wants to have its homeland, that wants to have a Jewish majority, that wants to observe the Jewish values. And I think that what has been going on lately perhaps is a way of getting away from the traditional Zionism, which by the way was also espoused by people like Jabotinsky where we are discussing now where perhaps there are two schools of thought, one which believes in the sanctity of land and one which believes in the sanctity of life. And I believe that those who believe in the sanctity of life understand that this is much more important than two or three more inches of territories. Well, the ambassador Even is inferring that we don't value human life on the I same plane. That's, did that's, not quite, say a, that's that quite an I, inference. I did that, not uh, that our brand you. of Zionism does not uh, no, value you, human I'm life sorry, as a higher what level. You, what we're doing is that you are falsifying right now by saying that we don't abide anymore by traditional Zionism. So I was answering you now. The second point, which I think is even worse, was, and I picked it up very carefully, yeah, that the majority of the Israel, the majority was achieved based on five Arab votes. Right. I would hate to see the day when the citizens of Israel, including the Arab citizens of Israel, are not considered equal to the other citizens and where one distinguishes between those votes. I oh. think this is a racist statement. Uh, we just got a call from the office of Benjamin Netanyahu saying that Howard Barbanel does not represent the Likud party itself. He repudiates all your statements. I'll let you comment. Stay tuned. Thank you, Madam Ambassador. Uh, well, anyway, uh, reference Howard Barbanel. The reason I wanted to show the clip, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu's office, as you know, Howard called and said you don't represent the Likud party and that they repudiate all statements and comments made by you. Is this a case of good cop, bad cop, that the Likud, Likudniks or the right wing in the, uh, in the United States can be the tough guys vis-a-vis -vis the Palestinians and the Arabs and that uh, he's going to take a, a road of conciliation and, uh, and statesmanship? Well, I will tell you that Likud USA is an independent organization of thousands of American Jews who feel the way we do. Why was he motivated process. to call in the middle of the night and say you don't well, speak? Well, we know he didn't call. It was someone from his office. And uh, yes, I would say that there's probably a great deal of truth to what you're saying. And along those lines, I'd, like to, ask Mr. I'd like to ask Mr. Alkid. You're going to be a bad now with the ambassador. Yes, for a moment. Uh, why do you deserve U.S. aid when you have not revoked the PLO Charter, when you've not disarmed Hamas and Islamic Jihad, and while Jews are still dying uh, uh, in buses and uh, on the streets of Israel? You want me to answer that? Please, Mr. Ambassador. First, we are, we are trying our best to uh, confront uh, all kinds of extremism in the Palestinian territory. Unfortunately, 
uh, most, if not all, the weapons uh, hold by these groups have been smuggled to the Palestinian territory prior to the arrival what of about the Palestinian the Authority. Now? We are trying now to deal with the legacy which was left uh, by the Israeli occupation. Now, with regard to the covenant, we were working according to a timetable, agreed timetable between the two sides. Unfortunately, there was delays, including the withdrawal, including the arrival to the second stage, uh, the agreement on the second stage. And we are still committed, and we, we are declaring that repeatedly. The moment we are able to convene the Palestinian National Council in the Palestinian territory, these paragraphs related to Israel will be annulled. Is that so? It, has that been said before? It has been said before. Some people do not want to hear that. But are you saying now, and you speaking for your, your uncle, the chairman, uh, that I this am, will happen the next time the Palestinian Authority the I Congress am speaking is in my official capacity as the representative of the Palestinian Liberation Organization and the uh, observer but what about the disarming nations. the terrorists? Oh, wait, hold it, hold it. You asked for something big there. Yeah. It seems to me that you got it. I want Senator Brown they to come. Tried, they tried for years to confront some of the things which are happening uh, now and failed. Uh, Senator Brown is the... Uh, okay, Howard, i got to say goodbye because I have Congressman Tom Lantos i got to put in that no seat. Problem. So goodbye. Thank, Thank you. you.